Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, yeah, what a lovely day. What a privilege it is to sing to the Lord and to sing about His love for us. Today, we're going to talk about the holiness of God. And it's, it's actually a, a very big subject. I'm just going to do like a summary because I just want you guys to, to be excited about who is our Father in heaven, how, how awesome is he, um, just to get a glimpse of his holiness, his uh, character. Because when, when that happens to you, it's like you get such a hunger for his word. You want to know him more intimately. You want to, you guys can understand what, I mean, what I'm meaning. So let's pray together. Father, we pray now and ask that you open our eyes so that we can see the wondrous things from your law, your word, Father. Because your word is perfect. Your word came to save us. Your word is Jesus Christ who opened our minds so that we can understand the Holy Scriptures. Yes, Father, your word is the one who opened our ears so that we can hear. Your word also promised us in Jeremiah, as we eat your word and make your word part of our every cell of our body, of our being, that your word becomes joy and rejoicing in our heart. And that's my prayer for everybody listening. It doesn't matter where they are in the world. And we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. So, when you talk about holiness of God, we also talk about the Holy Spirit. And in the scriptures, I don't know if you guys ever have ever read that in the Bible, but you don't just read about the Holy Spirit. In some of the older translations, you, you read about the Holy Ghost, but in some of the scriptures, you find the reference of the Spirit of Holiness. And that was, that was quite nice. So if you can open your book, your Bible, to the first book of Romans, the letter that was written to the Romans, to us as believers, just want to read for you verse 4 there. It says, but I'm going to read from verse 1. He's talking about Paul. Paul is um, it's a letter from Paul to the Romans, to the believers. He says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle. Apostle just means to be sent the saint one, separated. Now you can actually, they say, holy unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore or before by his prophets in the Holy Scripture, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made the seed of David. And remember, we just finished the Bible study on King David. So Jesus is the seed of David also known as the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared, Jesus was declared the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of Holiness. Does your Bible also say the Spirit of Holiness? It's quite interesting, eh? By the resurrection from the dead. So, the Holy Spirit is also called the Spirit of Holiness. So, we're going to look at some of the scriptures. What, what does God actually call us to? And we're going to go through all that, but we're going to go on a journey. So let's start in the beginning. Let's go through some scriptures in the beginning. Exodus 15. This is now when God appeared to Moses and he led his people out of bondage, out of Egypt. Um. And this is a song that Moses wrote, um, Exodus chapter 15. But I'm just going to read one verse there. It says, verse 11, Who is like unto you, O Lord, 
among the gods. Who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Wow. I don't know about you, but this is like, this sums up God's character, some of his character. And it's, it's, it's quite amazing verse. So that talks about his glorious in holiness. That's amazing. And, and if you go to the Psalms, let's go to the Psalms. I'm just going to go through the Bible. I love to take some of the scriptures and just go through all the scriptures that we've got here listed so that we can, we can eat the word. So Psalms chapter 47, and we read there verse 8. It says, God reigns over all the nations. God sits upon the throne of his holiness. Wow. I don't know about you, but that, that struck me because I, it's like God's throne is holy. It's like his throne is the throne of holiness. Wow. That was for me was, wow. I didn't see that verse in my Bible yet until we started to prepare this lesson for us. So now we're going to look at and this is just, remember, what I'm doing now is I'm just, we're just scratching the surface. We're not even going into all the scriptures that is about holiness. I'm just, I'm just taking here and there a sample because we don't have enough time to go into all the scriptures. But it's just so that you, you guys can get like a fire in you to, to really want to delve into who is this God that we are worshiping. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Who is he? Who is Jesus Christ? Amen? Amen. So, there's a prophet. I don't know if you guys know this prophet. You probably have heard some of the scriptures. But this prophet was talking about, he was prophesying that a virgin will uh, bear a son. A virgin will bear a son. There's, there's, there's a lot of those prophets that prophesied about the coming of God, the Word, okay, Jesus, but it's not all of them that talked about the virgin birth, but do you, can you, do you know? Gabe, Gabriel, the angel, that's the angel, yes, but who's the prophet that, that um, remember Gabriel only came to Mary just to say, this is going to happen now. The prophets already prophesied it. And remember, the angels can only, they can only share with us what has already been prophesied by a man of God, by God's prophets. Because if you read in uh, the book of Jude, it says God does nothing before revealing what he's about to do through his prophets. Okay, that's true. We can, we can go to the scripture. Let's, let's go to the scripture. Um, if you go to the book of Amos, I think it's Amos. Amos, yes, Amos chapter 3, verse 7, it says, Surely God, the Lord God, will do nothing until he first reveal his secrets to his servants, the prophets. So nothing, an angel, an angel uh, uh, nobody, no, even if he proclaims to be an angel of God, remember the devil comes as an angel of light, so if an angel comes to you and he talks to you and he wants to, to tell you this is going to happen, it needs to be in the Bible, what he's, what he's going to tell you. It needs to be prophesied by one of God's prophets before he can proclaim it. Okay, so who is this prophet? Let's look. He says, he, he said, a virgin will bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel. That means God, God is with us. So that prophet is the prophet. <coughs> Who can say that? Who can say that? <laughs> That's the prophet. He also said, this very same prophet, in just two chapters later, he's saying, and this son, this son that will be born, his name shall be called Wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. We know this is Jesus. 
Né? But who is this prophet that prophesied it? Okay, I'm going to give you the name of the prophet. It's Isaiah. <laughs> so if you, if you go to your, in your Bible to Isaiah 7, you will find there in, um, in, in that chapter that, that he's prophesying. He's saying a virgin, this is a sign that God will do. God will, a virgin will bear a child, a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. That means God with us. Okay. Remember I was telling you guys, God became a man. That's Jesus. Okay. And in two, pro uh, um, just two chapters later, Isaiah 9, he was talking about this virgin, verse 6. Unto us a child is born, a son is given, the government will be on his shoulder. That means he's got the kingdom, the power and the glory, and um, and upon his, and his name should be called. You guys have seen that. Okay, so this very prophet that was prophesying about Jesus coming, did you guys know how he reacted when he saw the holiness of God? And that shook me because I was like, wow. This guy had an encounter. This prophet, Isaiah, had an encounter. He was probably one of the most holy, what can I say, righteous persons that you can find in Israel. It was in a time where the whole, I say the whole country or the whole land, the people have gone astray. They've, they've turned from God's word. They were doing sins. They were doing wicked things. And this prophet was warning them, let's say, God's judgment is coming. You guys, you must repent, come back to God. But when this person was taken into heaven and he saw a, a, a vision of God, let's look what, what he did. Turn to Isaiah. I just want you guys to see. This man of God, when he was taken into heaven, so it's Isaiah chapter 6. And this was in the year that King Uzziah died. Uzziah is probably the last king in Israel that was like um, after his father David, who was a righteous king, who was doing God's word, trying to get the people to come back to God's word. And that king died. Now listen, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Now this, this guy is... He's seeing it. He's seeing it. He's, he's seeing this vision. He's describing the vision that he sees. Listen now to the words. He says, sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his clothes, no, his, his clothes filled the temple, his robe. Above it stood the seraphim. Now, you get different ranks of angels. And the seraphim, for me, is the highest ranking. It's like the archangels. Just I think it's there above the archangels. You're going to see now why I say so, because each one of them had six wings. This, they didn't have just two wings, they had six wings. And with two of those wings, he would cover his face. Those angels, holy angels, big angels, mighty angels. They, with two of the wings, they covered their faces. Two of them, they covered their feet. And then with two of them, they were flying. And it says here, and one cried unto the other. And what did they say? When they were going around God's throne, these angels, what did they say? They said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door moved at his voice. No? The voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And then, listen now the reaction of this prophet. This man of God, when he saw this vision, he said, woe is me. Now, when you read in the English, where he says, when somebody is saying woe, that means judgment. Like, that's the strongest words you can use in, 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 um, when, you, when, you, when you say in English, woe. It's like the strongest word of judgment that's coming. So he's saying on himself, he's proclaiming a judgment on himself. Woe is me, for, he says, I am undone. Because I am a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. So he's saying the people, our country, our land. 
and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Wow. This, this really touched my heart when I realized that this is a man of God and he's seeing this awesome vision about God's holiness and he sees those mighty angels and all the angels can do is just to, to cover their faces and cry holy, holy, holy. And they can't even look at God because he's so holy. And this, this is amazing. I, I just wanted to, to share this with you guys because when you look at Jesus, when he came, he taught on this. And we're going to read from Matthew chapter 6. So just go to Matthew chapter 6, from Isaiah chapter 6 to Matthew chapter 6. And it was there where his, his um, disciples saw Jesus. And they saw what he could do. They saw that he was healing the sick. I mean, a lot of miracles. And they saw that he was always praying. A lot of time he was praying. And when they, they saw him, and in, um, when they, um, they saw him praying, yeah, we, let's read from verse 7. It says, yeah, but when you pray... Now he's answering because they asked him, how can we pray? And he said, but when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as all the heathens do. No? For they think that they might be heard for their much speaking. So there's other verses as well that says that hypocrites also love to pray. And that struck me because like, I don't want to be a hypocrite. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I don't, be, I don't want to be a hypocrite. But God says that hypocrites love to pray, especially in front of people. They love to pray and let everybody know how beautiful they can pray, you know, all these mighty words in English. And I mean, I struggle sometimes with English, but I'm getting there. But he says, when you pray, therefore, do not be like them. For your father knows what you need even before you ask him. After this manner, therefore, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. So, I don't think we talk enough about God's holiness. Do we really know who we are dealing with? Do we have reverence for him? Do we have the fear of the Lord? Because, when God came and he became a man, the first thing he wanted to teach us when we pray, the first sentence is like, let your name be hallowed. Let your name be holy. Holy is your name. Do you guys see that? That was like for me was an eye opening. We don't talk enough about do we really realize who we're worshiping? So before, I mean, you, this is the start of your prayer. It's like you, you must be aware of you're entering his holy, holy presence. How holy is his presence? Now, this is another scene which I'm going to just touch on here. Let's just go to Mark. I just want you guys to realize the holiness of God. Mark chapter 4. And it says here, verse 41. And it was that, we can actually read from verse 35, but it's all about that, um, that time. You guys, have, you know the scene, you've, you've read it in your Bible. But have we really looked at what happened here? I mean, just let's just read those few verses and just, let's just go back to that scene of the seas and the waves and everything, the storms. I don't know about you guys, but that's terrifying. Have you ever been in a storm where it feels like the roof is coming off? Um, it's like you feel like you're gonna, it's like you're gonna drown. You think you're gonna die now. This is how the disciples felt. And remember, these these are fishermen. They've been on <laughs> they've been on the boats their whole lives. But each and every time 
that situation comes where there's a storm and it's so furious. This must have been a very bad storm. Let's just read. And the same day when the 11 was, uh, um, was come to him, he said to them, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had gone to the, um, when he had, they had sent away the multitude, um, they took him even as he is in the, in the ship no? or the boat. And there was with him um, another, uh, other small boats. And there arose a great storm of the wind, verse uh, 37, and the waves beat against the boat so that it was full of water. And he was in the, in the uh, Jesus was in the, the backside of the boat. No? He was asleep. I don't know about you, but I can't sleep when, when there's a storm or uh, stuff like that. But this is Jesus. He was so full of peace. I mean, he was so calm, he could sleep right through that storm. And he was asleep on a pillow. And then the disciples woke him up and they said to him, Master, care you, do, not, do you not care? We are perishing. And then Jesus arose and he rebuked the wind and he said unto the sea, Be still, peace. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And this is the verse that we're coming to now. It says, and he said unto him, why are you so fearful for the storm? How is it that you have no faith? And then it says here, yeah, they feared exceedingly. I mean, they feared the storm. But when they saw that this man, what he did, who is God, what he did, shook them to the core. And I was praying and I was asking, Lord, but what is this? What? Why were they so, they, they, they feared for him then? Because when I realized, okay, the storm was nothing for him. They were so afraid of the storm and they were thinking that they're going to die because they woke him up and said, do you not care? We're going to die now. And he, he just rebuked this, the wind and the waves and everything was so calm. In, and that's when they feared for him because then I realized but this is not a man um, he says yeah and they said to one another what manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him and that's the that holy that holy reverence you know that I was talking to you about their fear changed from the fear of the storm which we're not supposed that's an unholy fear that's not from God to the fear of the Lord, which is holy and pure, enduring forever. And that's because why? And I was, I was asking the Lord, but why? And then he said to me, it's because when you enter his holy presence, when you realize how holy he is and how mighty he is, it's like you're overwhelmed. And that's what happened. That's a place where we all need to get to. We realize what he and and we're going to look at that as well now um let's go to luke there's so many examples but we're just going to touch on the um, another one and then we're going to go through some scriptures in the new testament of what it is what 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 is this holiness um luke chapter five we're just going to read a couple of verses there luke chapter five and it says here from verse one it says and it came to pass that as the people pressed against Jesus. No? They stood very close to him and they, they pressed against him to hear the word of God that he stood by the lake. And uh, verse 2, he says, and he saw two ships there standing, or uh, two boats, but the fishermen were gone out of them and they were washing their nets. So the boats were just there on the shore. No? And he entered into one of the, the ships or the boats, which was Simon's boat. Okay, so you guys know that Simon is Peter. Okay, but he says here, yeah, this was, was Peter's boat, and he sat down and he taught the people out of the boat. Now, when he had left speaking, he's done speaking to the people, he said to, to Simon Peter, launch out to the deep, now, just take the, the ship deeper into the, uh, into the sea. And he said, they, and let down your nets so that we can catch something. And Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord or Master, we have worked the whole night 
and we had nothing. We didn't catch anything. But then he looked at Jesus and he realized, but this man, you know, he is God. And he says, but at your word, nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the net. And when they had done this, all the fish now in the sea jumped into the net. <laughs> there was such a great multitude of fishes that the, the net began to broke, to break. And then uh, Simon was calling, uh, Peter was calling to his partners, which was um, James and John, huh? the brothers. And uh, then they, they came and they helped him. And both of the ships was full, filled with fish. And the, the boats began to sink because of so many fish. And then, listen now, listen to this as well. Simon Peter then was overwhelmed by the holiness of God. The holiness of God will sometimes, and this is why that prophet also, when Isaiah saw the, the holiness of God and realized, I mean, he was, he said, woe unto me, I'm undone. I'm, I'm coming apart. I'm, I, 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 I'm un, I have unclean lips. But when Peter saw who this was and realized that who is Jesus, listen what he, what he did. He said, when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' feet and he said, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. And he was astonished that there were so many fish. So Jesus said to him, do not fear. This is so, this is so amazing. Because then, this is where he is so overwhelmed by his holiness and what he did for us and, and everything that he went through. But you can, you can just hear his voice now when he says, do not fear, you know. From now on, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Okay? And then when they had uh, brought their boats to the land, they forsook all and they followed Jesus. Of Nathaniel. Um, what do you want to know about him? <laughs> oh, you mean like a, a one of the prophets? Yeah, uh, one of the prophets yeah. uh, in the Old Testament. Um, okay, I will come that, back to that question now. Uh, let's just finish this, and then I'll we'll do the question afterwards. Huh? So. But do you guys see how amazing this this uh, here, this meeting is? Realizing how, who is this Jesus, and he becomes overwhelmed by the holiness of God. And then the next moment, Jesus says to him, "I'm making you a fisher of men." And what is the meaning of holiness? Just so that we can get the definition. I didn't want to touch on it at first because I first wanted to get you guys to realize. Just how people react. True people, followers of the word of God, how they reacted. And the word holiness, the primary meaning for holiness is basically to be set apart, to be consecrated, to be devoted, to be sacred. Okay? And then secondary meaning is like to live holy, pure, clean, and godly. Okay? But we can go on the definition it's not this is not all that it is. I'm just giving some of the words just to so that you guys can get a better understanding. But the the primary meaning for holiness means to be set apart. And that's why God has chosen us to be a set apart. We as believers, as Christians, we should not be the same as the world. We need to be set apart. And that's what the word means for, for God's use, no? for for the Lord's use only. To be set apart. Okay. <coughs> yes. Romans 12. Yeah. Do not be conformed to this world. 
but be to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So we need to be different. We need to think different. We need to speak different. We need to, to behave different. We're not supposed to be like this. So what does the New Covenant, the New Testament, teach on holiness? And we're just going to go through some of the scriptures. Now, remember, Paul was one of the biggest teachers in the uh, in the in the New Testament. He wrote about two thirds of the of the of the the book of uh, you know the, the New Testament. So um, let's just go to Romans chapter six. I just want you guys to see what is the scriptures that we can find on holiness, just so that you guys can see. God is very serious about that we as believers should be holy, okay? But there's a lot of scriptures, but we're just going to touch on here and there. Verse 19, he says there, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as you have yielded your, your members, your body, now, to be servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, now, even so now, as a believer, we need to, yield our members uh, our bodies as servants to righteousness unto holiness so you can see here god is very serious he wants us no longer to be our bodies and our members must not be part of uncleanness and going into sin and all those wrong things he wants us to live um, to be yielded to righteousness unto holiness and uh, the same chapter here verse 22 he says here but now being made free from sin, because we became the servants to God, you must now bear the fruit, now have the fruit unto holiness, and the everlasting. Uh, the end of that is everlasting life. So, when we we have the right fruit, and we, how do we get the fruit? Remember, we were talking about the fruit of the spirit. That is when God's Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us. When God's Spirit is in you, the Spirit of holiness. That's when you can bear the right fruit. And Jesus said, you will know them by their fruits. Amen? You will know them by their fruits. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm just going to read one verse there is also. It says here, 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1. It says, having therefore these promises. All these promises that God has given us. Remember, his promises is all his word now. He says, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all the filthiness of the flesh and of our spirit. Let us walk in the perfection of holiness, perfecting holiness in the fear of, of God. So you can clearly see that Paul is also teaching us to say we must fear God. That's the only fear that we must have. And we must be perfecting holiness, walking in holiness. Okay, God has called us now. To be holy. Now we're going to go to the book of Ephesians. Just a couple of verses. I just want you guys to see the scriptures. Where um, Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 24. Um, we can actually read here. From verse 20. It says here. But you now have not learned Christ. So if you have. That you have heard of him. Having been taught by Jesus Christ, the word of God, now as the truth is in Jesus. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. So the, the old man, that's the person, that sinful nature now, that we had. We must put that off. And that's where, what happens. When you put off, you, you put that old man to death now. It's crucified. That old man is crucified with Christ. And then, then you are baptized because we bury the old man, the, the dead person. And then we are a new creation in Christ. Amen. And it says here that we put on the new man. That is um, renewed. Uh, verse 23. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Same that you were talking about. And it says that you put on the new man. Which is. Um, which after God is created in righteousness. And true holiness. There's the word again. So that new person. That new spirit. That born again believer has been created in God. No, it's God. God has created us in righteousness and true holiness. Wow, that's, I mean, you. I cannot, it's, it's not something I can, um, you know, think out of myself. This is God's word speaking and teaching us. 
So the book of first, I think it's first Thessalonians chapter three. I just want to make if it's the sure it's the right verse here. Uh, yeah, here it is. So he says, yeah, um, first Thessalonians chapter three, verse 13. He says, yeah, to the end, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, our father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all the saints. So this just says that he wants to establish our hearts nah, in holiness, unblameable. So he wants us to live pure lives. That is his will. You just go to the next chapter. It says here, uh, verse, verse, um, verse 7, it says, For God hath called us not unto uncleanness. So God has not called us to, go to, to do sins and uncleanness, to walk un, in, in uncleanness. But God has called us, what does he say? Unto holiness. Wow. Uh, this this is really changing the way we think. We should we should look differently at our lives, and we should take this call serious because God is holy. Therefore, we should be also holy. No? And um, this is all the writings of of um, of our brother beloved Paul. So let's go to the the first book of Timothy, the letter that he wrote to Timothy. Timothy. First book of Timothy, first letter of Timothy, chapter 2. Yes, you're welcome. I'm reading from the Amplified and the explanation. It says, unto holiness, the first verse. Yes. And it says, to be dedicated. Yes. Especially for God's behavior. Wow. And pleasing you, whether it's public or in private. Yes. Yeah, because God is not just interested in what you do in public. He's also interested in what we do in private now when we're alone. And then um, the first uh, letter of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15, he says, Notwithstanding, um, she shall be saved with childbearing if they continue, he says here, continue in faith, charity, in holiness. And so, so we need to continue as the bride now. But it's talking about women as well. But I believe this is also for the bride of Christ. The, the, those true believers, we should walk in faith, love, holiness. Amen? So, I mean, it's confirmed all over. We're going to just read a couple of verses more, and then we're going to we're gonna end here. But I just, want, I just want to get this message across so that we understand how important holiness is for God, because He is holy. So it's Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 10, it says here, For they... Now he's talking about if we are, if God, if we allow God to correct us now. For they uh, verily for a few days chastened us now and disciplined us after their own pleasure. This is our earthly fathers. But he, that is God, chastens us for our profit. He does that for our good now. Uh, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So God, he is doing this correction, when he disciplines us now and correct us, rebuke us, whatever, correct us now, disciplines us, it is because he loves us. This is for our good, that we might be partakers of his holiness. So we need to be partakers of his holiness. And then just um, on the 14th verse here, it says here, follow peace with all men and holiness. So we need to have live in peace with all men as far as possible now um and holiness we need to walk in holiness without which no man shall see the lord and this this verse really touched my heart because i really and it's like a, it, it really hit me and then i realized that if we do not have and pursue peace with everybody around us you know and holiness both of them you will not see God. You will not see the Lord. And this is a this is a sobering thought to think about it, because he says here, no man will see the Lord without holiness and pursuing peace with all men. Amen. So this really touched my heart. I don't know about you guys, but um, this subject of holiness, I'm really gonna take it more to thought. You know, of of thinking of 
who we, we worship? Do we really know our Father? I want to know Him more. I want to, I want to love Him with all my heart, my soul, mind, and strength. I want to love my neighbor. That is what He has commanded us to do. And we need to walk in His love. And we can only do that by His help, by His Spirit, the Spirit of holiness. Amen. So let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of being here today as believers. And thank you for that we are able to share your word. Thank you that we still have opportunity. We don't have so much persecution here yet, Father. But I know persecution is coming for those who truly believe in your word and want to do your word. But while it is day, Father, we will want to do the work and um, get people to know you, to know how holy you are, how good you are, how much you love them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, that's powerful, eh? So I hope you guys enjoyed this teaching. And yeah, please feel free to share it.